Hello, welcome to another video. If you're like me, you have to write a lot of code that uses SFTP servers, and this gets quite repetitive. And because of this, I've been looking for tools to make my job easier and eliminate some of that repetitive work. So one of the tools that I've been looking at is Apache Airflow. Now, Apache Airflow is a workflow engine, and what a workflow engine does is that it allows you to define a process and that process consists of tasks. And the workflow engine will basically manage and monitor those tasks. Um, so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're going to create a workflow using Apache Airflow. And that workflow will download, process, and upload files from an SFTP server. Let's look at how uh, I first installed Apache Airflow. So I use these steps. We're using this version of Airflow. Now, what's important to note here is that because we are dealing with SFTP servers, we need to install two additional packages uh, after we have installed Apache Airflow. So these are the two um, additional packages. And once we have installed Apache Airflow, then we can start the scheduler and the web server. The example that we're going to look at will be a workflow that consists of four steps. First, we will wait for the file to exist on the SFTP server. Then we will download that file. Uh, we'll do some processing of that file. And then we will upload back the process file to the SFTP server. So in Apache Airflow, a workflow takes the form of a directed acyclic graph, so or a DAG, right? So here we're defining the DAG. And a DAG consists of tasks. So these things here, wait for input file, download file, process file, and upload file, these are what Airflow calls tasks. And the relationship between these tasks is defined using this bit shift operator. Okay, so this is the first task, this is the second task, and so on. Now, tasks themselves are instances of operators, and each task will have a task ID, and, the dep and depending on the operator, it will have a bunch of arguments. So let's look first at this download file task. Download file here is an instance of the SFTP operator. And the important parameters to note here are SSH con ID, remote file path, local file path, and operation. So let's have a look at this SSH con ID or SSH connection ID. The good thing about Apache Airflow is that the information about how to connect to the servers that the workflow depends on is kept separate from the workflow. So this connection ID, which defines how this operator should connect to this SFTP server, is actually configured in the Airflow dashboard. So let's have a look at the Airflow dashboard where this uh, connection is defined. So this is the Airflow dashboard. We go to admins and we go to connections. And I have already defined that connection here, uh, my SFTP server, right? So here is the configuration for connecting to that SFTP server. Here's the host. Here's the username, right? And here are some additional configuration like the private key to use and the public key of the server that we're connecting to. The other important parameters are remote file path and local file path. So this is the path that we want to download and we want to save that downloaded file to this particular uh, location. And since we are downloading files, 
the operation is get. Some parameters in Apache Airflow operators can contain templates. So this is what you're seeing here. We have the double curly brace, right? This is a template. And the variables available to the template are defined in the Apache Airflow documentation. So here are the templates available. And DS here refers to the execution date. And run ID refers to the, refers to the current the run ID of the current DAG run. The next task is process file. And this process file um, task is an instance of the Python operator. So the Python operator is an Airflow operator that allows us to invoke um, generic Python functions. So in this case, this Python operator is invoking this function, process file. And let's have a look at that process file function up here. And what this process file function does is that it will read the input file, which is a CSV file, and it will append to that file a column with the contents process, and then it will write that new file to an output file. Right. So once that output file is ready, then the next task, which is upload file, will upload that output file. So in this case, we're using the SFTP operator again, but instead of using the get operation that we used last time, we're now using the put operation. Now we skipped one of the tasks, which is this wait for input file task. So this task is a little special in that it's not an operator, but it is a sensor. So in Apache Airflow, a sensor is a type of an operator which will block the workflow from executing until some condition is met. So in this case, we're using this SFTP sensor, and this sensor will block until this file that we're expecting is available on the SFTP server. So now let's switch to the Apache Airflow dashboard and let's run this workflow. So I have the workflow that we want to execute here. So we can execute it here by just pressing this trigger DAG button. And now the workflow is running. And let's look at the status of that workflow. We can see here that the check for file task is running. And let's click on this and let's look at the log. And we can see here that it's poking for this file here. And it cannot find the file, so it keeps on looping until it does. So let's look at the graph view again, and we can see that it hasn't proceeded to the next task yet because it's still waiting for that file to exist. So let's go to our SFTP server and let's create that file. So it needs a file with the current date, which is, let's have double check what is the file that it's expecting. So it's expecting this file. 2021.05.16 input.csv. So let's create that path on the SFTP server. And let me copy the CSV file that I created previously to that directory. Okay, so after when, when I paste this, um, the SFTP sensor should detect it and it should unblock and allow the next task to execute. Let's go back to the graph view and it should find the file and allow get file to execute. Yeah, so now get file is executing and process file is executing and let's wait for put file to execute. Okay, so now put file has executed 
and let's have a look at SFTP server. It should that directory should now contain another file, which is the output file. There. So this is the output file, and as you can see, it has that additional column that we added. So this workflow works, but there is one major problem in that it uses local file paths. So if you look here, um, these are local file paths, right? So this one and uh, this, these as well, and this one here as well. So these are local file paths. Now, the problem with using local file paths is that in production, when you use Airflow in production, you will most probably be using either the Kubernetes or the Celery executor. And when you use these executors, you're likely to have a cluster of workers. So there's no guarantee that each task in your DAG runs on the same worker. So what, we, what will happen is that when this task executes and downloads, it might operate on one worker, right? And it will save to that this path on that specific worker. But when it comes to running this operator, this might be executed on a different worker. And these paths, this path here, might not be available on that worker. So to solve this problem, we need to write our workflow in a way that does not use local file system paths. And that's where we have to use this concept called hooks. So hooks are basically an interface to an external service. It's an Airflow concept. A hook is basically just an API to an external service. So behind the scenes, the SFTP operator actually uses a hook. And the hook that it uses is the SSH hook. So we're going to rewrite the previous workflow to use hooks instead of operators. Now, hooks are APIs, so they need to be executed from Python code. So what I've done is I've replaced the download and the upload file operators, I mean tasks, with Python operators. So previously, this was an SFTP operator. So was this an SFTP operator. Now they are Python operators. The Python operators, um, both of these will execute their respective Python function. So download file will execute down the download file function and the upload file task will execute the upload file uh, Python function. So let's have a look at this download file function. So this download file function, it uses a hook to download the file from the SFTP server. <coughs> uh, you can see the function that it uses here, uh, SFTP client fo. And after it has downloaded that file, it will upload that the contents of that file, it will save the contents of that file to XCOM. And what XCOM is, it's a feature of Apache Airflow that allows tasks to exchange messages. So when we exchange messages, we can also provide a key for that message, right? And we are also, and of course we have to provide the value of that message as well. When we save something to XCOM, we use the XCOM push function. When we pull something from XCOM or when we retrieve something from XCOM, we use the XCOM pull function. So the process file um, function in the previous workflow operated on local file system paths, right? So the new process file implementation will instead pull the data that it needs from XCOM. So when it pulls from XCOM, it will specify the task ID of that task that generated the, da the data that it needs, as well as the key. So the key here and key here are the same. So once it retrieves that file, then the logic is the same, except for the final portion where it will 
save the processed file back to XCOM, right? So it will save to XCOM uh, the, the new file, which contains the additional column, and that file will in turn be retrieved by the upload file task. And this upload file task will upload the process file back to the SFTP server. So previously we used the SFTP operator for uploading. So in this case, we're using the SSH hook. And the function that we use to upload is put FO. So this is just an example, and I wanted to use XCOM just to illustrate how it can be used. Um, but in a production workflow, I might not use XCOM depending on how big the files that we are processing are. If the files are very big, then I might decide instead of using XCOM to upload the files um, to a temporary, temporary database table. Then the Python functions download, process file, and upload file will operate on that temporary database table. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you in this video. I wanted to see whether Airflow was a good candidate for automating SFTP tasks. And from what I see at the moment, I'm not so convinced that it is yet. In my upcoming videos, I'll look at some other solutions for creating workflows around SFTP operations.